All right, class, we are back. And we will be talking about Anne Askew and the ballad which Anne Askew made and sang when she was in Newgate. I'm going to switch over so you can see a little picture of her. Here she is. This is an artist rendition, of course, not a real photo. Um, and that's her probably going into the Tower of London, I think. Remember where she was tortured, unfortunately. Yeah, tortured. And then after being tortured on the rack in the Tower of London, um, she was burned at the stake. Yeah, very, very sad. And it happened during the Renaissance. Things like that were pretty uncommon for women to still be tortured and burned at the stake, but you know, they still happen. If you think about the Salem witch trials in the United States, or it wasn't the United States at the time, it was obviously the colonies. Um, not even really the colonies, was it? Yeah, it was, it was the colonies. Um, well, you know, the Puritans, they settled in Plymouth and that area. Anyway, they had um, people burned at the stake there as witches. So that was the 1600s and that still happened. And witches were still burned at the stake um, in the 1600s in Europe too. Um, but I think being tortured and burned at the stake, pretty unusual, especially um, because Anne Askew was just speaking religious beliefs. So anyway, all right. So uh, Anne Askew, I included a few uh, links in the lecture. One that's pretty interesting you might want to watch. It's um, from the TV show The Tudors, and it dramatizes Askew's ballad, Ministry, and her suspected relationship with Catherine Parr, who is the wife of King Henry VIII, which led to her execution. So um, she was being tortured in the Tower of London on the rack. The rack is where you get stretched. Your body gets stretched until like your bones crack. And she was stretched on the rack so long and hard that um she had to be pretty much carried in on a chair um to be burned at the stake she couldn't walk it was pretty awful uh anyway that is dramatized in that in that clip that i included from the tutors um and and the reason they they tor tortured her you know they suspect is they wanted her to talk about you know basically um betray the confidence of um her quote unquote co-conspirators in religion, you know, and uh, basically it was people who were anti-Protestant uh, members of the government. They wanted to um, turn Henry VIII on Catherine Parr, who was his wife, so his sixth wife at the time. And they thought Catherine Parr was um, having some heretical beliefs uh, along the lines of um, and Askew's as well. Uh, and so they wanted Anne Askew to turn her in, so to speak, so they could um, turn Henry VIII against her and get her, uh, I guess, get him to divorce her or behead her or whatever, uh, so they could move someone in that they thought was more favorable to their religious beliefs. Anyway, Anne Askew, no matter how much she was tortured, did not ever turn in people. So it didn't work. She had her legs broken, and then she was burned at the stake. She lived from 1521 to 1546, tragically only to the age of 25. You know, that's when they did that to her, when she was 25 years old, a, a young single woman. Um, or no, she wasn't single, I'm sorry, she was married. She was married, but she wanted a divorce. Um, so she was 25 because she was tortured on the rack so much so that she then had to be carried on her burning, or carried to her burning um, at the stake. Uh, she was brought up in a family of means, actually, uh, and received a surprisingly good education. Um, again, as I said, families of wealth had the money to have a good library in their home and to hire tutors for their children. And so she actually had a good education. It didn't always happen, but she was lucky she got one. This education led to independent thinking, however, right? A sought-after attribute in our own era, era, but a potential death knell for a woman of earlier times. She was forced to marry Thomas Kime. Thomas Kime was um, first uh, in an arranged marriage with her older sister. Her older sister died, so then her father said, you know what, we already paid money to do this arranged marriage, so, uh, and you can go ahead and step into your sister's shoes and marry Thomas Kime. So at 15, she was forced to marry Thomas. A man whose Catholic views opposed her own strongly Protestant views. Now, um, if you recall, 
Henry VIII had um, broken with the Roman Catholic Church and made his own church, the Church of England, and made himself the head. Um, but there still were a lot of Catholic stalwarts in England at the time, and her husband was one of them. And she, though, had very strong Protestant views. Not only um, was, well, the Anglican Church itself was Protestant and protested, in other words, against the Catholic Church, that's what pro Protestant, Protestant means. But she was even beyond that. She said, you know what? I'm protesting the Church of England even, because I think the Church of England is too similar to the Catholic Church. I think we need to depart even farther away. She had... Um, different religious views. She didn't believe in transubstantiation, which was the belief that um, Christ's body was transformed. Like as you're taking the sacrament, um, you're literally eating the body of Christ. It like that piece of bread or whatever, the wafer, it suddenly turns into the body of Christ as you're eating it. So she didn't believe in that. She did her own reading of the Bible. And she said, I, I don't believe that's true. I, you know, when I, what I read in the Bible, it doesn't say that Christ's body is transformed um, in, you know, into that bread that I'm eating. Like, so that was one of the um, beliefs that she actually preached against was transubstantiation. Um, and she also preached that women and people in general should be able to read the Bible for themselves and uh, gain their own understanding of it and testimony of it. Uh, and that was very dangerous to people at the time because that meant that it was taking control away from the church and control away from the government because the government considered itself the head of the church. Therefore, if people read on their own, they would have their own understanding of the Bible, which would give them power um, to criticize the church and power to have their own views, which could have been different to what the church and what the government wanted people to have. Um, so not only did she have different views from the Anglican church and from her husband, who was a Catholic, but she... Um, she refused to take her husband's name, which was extremely unusual. It's unusual for nowadays, right? For women to reject their husband's name when they get married. But of course, it's more acceptable nowadays. But back then, absolutely unheard of. And she refused to take Thomas Kimes last name. So she wanted to still be known as Anne Askew, even after she got married. Um, and she then took it another step farther and wanted to divorce her husband. She was the actual, the first woman ever to ask for a divorce and she did so you know in england she was the first ever to ask for a divorce in england and she did so on religious grounds she said i need to be divorced from my husband because he's a heretic i don't believe in anything he believes in religiously or at least a large you know we we differ enough religiously that i consider him a heretic and therefore i should no longer be married to him well she wasn't granted the divorce but her husband did throw her out of the house um and then she moved to she moved to london and she started preaching down there but um, he had her arrested and brought back to him twice. Uh, and then the third time she was arrested, she was thrown into the Tower of London. She did seek that divorce and she became the first woman in English history to request a divorce. So that was a big, huge accomplishment. In London, Anne made friends with Catherine Parr, the sixth wife of Henry VIII, as I mentioned. She argued against the doctrine of transubstantiation and, um, her third time being arrested, she was thrown into jail. Tower of Lord, London, tortured, and burned at the stake. The poem of hers that we read for class was written while she was imprisoned in Newgate. She was imprisoned in Newgate, and like the poem's narrator, Anne herself never let the anchor to her substantial ship fall to any drizzling mist. She did not take her husband's surname. She did not convert to her husband's religion, despite being thrown out of her house. She did not recant her beliefs or betray her friendship with Catherine Parr, despite torture by the rack that broke her legs and a death sentence by fire. She still held on. She never recanted. That kind of strength is humbling and awe-inspiring. And I leave you to read her words in the ballad which Anne asked you made and saying she was moving. Who could have thought she could have enough strength to sing after going through all that she did? So I turn you over to her words. <laughs> 